Welcome to Kim Talks Resilience, where we share stories of insight and inspiration in life, love, and business with resilient women from around the world. Speaking with authors, entrepreneurs, founders, and coaches to learn their strategies for a more resilient life so we can all build the life we love. I'm your host, Kim Hayden. All righty. I, I love a good conversation around, um, you know, sustainability and, and living a fuller life and, and all of these things. And the question is, is how do we do this? Right. How, how, what is this? We hear a lot of catchphrases, but what actually is it? And then, you know, it, it's, it evolves over into, you know, when you're living your best life, what are you going to do with that? And I know a lot, uh, I think it's, like 80% of people say they want to write a book. And yet it's less than, I think it's less than 8% uh, North Americans. And globally, it's less than 5% have written a book. So and I personally have not written my own book. I have been part of other people's books. So like working with other people, because it seems like it's such a huge endeavor. But I'm excited by our next guest, Linda. I'm going to say this wrong because I'm from Kansas and I'm, I get a pass. I'm from Kansas. Linda uh, Koshimet, I hope that's close, has been exploring the meaning and purpose for many years by intertwining an 18 plus year long career in corporate business consulting with travel, teaching yoga, uh, co-founding a sustainability startup photography, and you got to check out our website, it's gorgeous, and studying the metaphysical concept of meaningful relationships. The latter included a year-long journey across Europe to ask over 100 people, how is it to be you? Through fiction, nonfiction, and artistic photography, she helps seekers of existential meaning find their inner compass and craft their own path. Linda has recently published her debut magical realism novel, Contrast. So let's do this. Let's bring her in and learn all we can. Hello, Linda. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> so you were we're almost correct. I would almost. say I would say Kausemans as my last name. Okay. But I don't really care. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get it. I'm just Kim Hayden. So it's super easy to, you know, yeah. but um, no, I, and I do blame that. Honestly, I'm being from Kansas. And if you're from Kansas, please do not write in and, and berate me. I am somewhat joking a little, but somewhat. Um, so I want to start this off because you're not from Kansas. So tell me, you know, who is Linda? Where are you from? And uh, uh, give us a bit of pre-frame. Is that cool? Yeah. Well, awesome. I'm not sure. who is Linda is a very big question. So let me just <laughs> bring it in. <laughs> bring it in a little bit. <laughs> to the basics. <laughs> so my name is Linda. I live in the Netherlands in a, in a, in a place called Haarlem, which is a really great place. It's close to Amsterdam, close to the beach. It's perfect. Um, 44, 45 next month. And yeah, as said, I've I've worked as both a corporate business consultant, um, plus also all my solo traveling, all my writing, all my yoga teaching, all my work towards developing me as a person. And I'm now in the phase of life um, and the stage of my business, basically, to bring that together, bring my logical mind and experience together with my emotional heart and my my bleeding heart for the world and um and help people create that better and more meaningful life for themselves uh, i i will tell you that one of the things that i love the most is that through a world experience of the of the the pandemic we've all gotten so much closer like, I love the fact that I'm over here in Calgary, Alberta, and we can have this conversation. And when I think that, you know, knowing that Netherlands, Canada, from Kansas, when we look at this, at the end of the day, being human 
has the same fundamentals. It's, it's, it's the same challenge for all of us, right? Exactly. Yeah. And that, and that's the, the year I did asking people, how is it to be you? That was my main founding. Like, yes, we're all different. Yes. We've grown up in different cultures, different bodies, different minds, different everything. And yet we're all human and have the same needs. We all want to love and we want to have fun and we want to have meaningful relationships and connections. And, you know, in the end, that's really what matters to all of us, no matter where we are. And I, you know, especially as polarized as the world is right now, I keep reminding myself of that. And yeah, personally, I like to make an effort to keep reminding people of that as well. Well, it's also a generational thing. Like I am not at 55, the same person I was at 45, nor at 45 at 35. Right. And I think that a, we have to have uh, uh, more understanding of our neighbors and, and neighbors is a term of, you know, somebody you're working beside, somebody you're living beside, somebody who has the same journey through, you know, a positive or a negative experience. Um, but we have to, we have to give space and also give space, give allowance for growth. So that when people are shifting or shifting their focus or changing their trajectory, right? That we don't stymie that, we support it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree. <laughs> I was just thinking about that today. Like looking back at when I was 20, I thought I knew everything. <laughs> yeah. And I knew yeah. nothing at yeah. all. <laughs> it's embarrassing actually to think about it. But yeah, I agree. And I, I also think it's, it's, you know, we're meant to be a little naive and, and silly when we're young. That's part of how we learn and it's part that's of how we that's grow. That's why we're so attractive when we're young. It's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why babies are so cute. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll bump into a couple walls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We fall yeah. down a couple times and we grow wiser. And I think that's the beauty of aging. You know, you have that hindsight experience and I've always loved living my life to the fullest. I've, I've done all the stupid things and I've done some really stupid things. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's allowed me to make me me. And as you said, because I've experienced all these things, I can also look at other people and think, oh, yeah, these are just people, no matter where they are in the process. And if they're doing it something entirely different, like, oh, yeah, I've been there once or I might be there at some point. And that's okay. And then you can really value the other for who they are and, and what they choose to do in life. And I love this age. The, the age 45 is such a transformational age because it's now um, you're starting to move into those wisdom years mm -hmm. and that you're now stepping into the mentorship space and um, you have a speaking career. So I want to, I want to touch on, uh, you have a very, very diverse uh, kind of personality and offering, but you have a speaking career. You also do workshops and such. And oh my gosh, like I recognize half the names of the companies that you've spoken to and worked with like T-Mobile, who doesn't know T-Mobile? <laughs> so um, walk us through what you do in that space from the, the, from the podium, from the stage, from the front of the room, how are you shifting and moving people? My speaking career, it's its fairly fresh though. So a lot of the names you see there were more from a corporate consulting space. Uh, it still means that I'm in the boardrooms and on the floor and I'm still speaking, but it's its fairly different to talk about how to make operational change possible just in order to make a business more efficient versus how to build a more meaningful life or a more meaningful business. So. I'm now in the transition of, okay, I'm finally ready to put myself out there as indeed that that wise person. And I'm still kind of like, oh, uh, but I'm just me. <laughs> who, who am I to, to say these things? And then I remember, oh, yeah, but I'm also me. You know, I, know, I have these experience. I know these things. So yeah. I'm trying to bring all that. When I'm in a, in a business situation and I'm talking about how to create 
an organization where people work together more meaningfully, not just because we're chasing a bottom line and not just because we're trying to be more efficient, but how do we do that? And I really try to speak from the experience I have, um, not just logically, but also emotionally. I've been in many, many, many instances and in businesses where things were the opposite of what I would advise and they hurt me deeply, you know, either as an employee or as an advisor or just as a simple human being. And I try to use that, that vulnerability. It's, it's, you know, I, I use the Brené Brown method <laughs> of speaking in that way because I know that will resonate with the people there. Not with everyone, of course, but a lot of people have experienced yeah. the same things. And I'm trying to show, like, yes, we're human. We all have these experiences. Even if it's a business and we're in this professional setting, we're yeah. still allowed to be humans. We're still allowed to feel just bad when we're treated poorly and when our friends get fired in a way that we don't agree with and when HR doesn't show up in the way that we want them to be you know so I try to be a person yeah. but I also know the jargon and I know how the company works That's... so they, they can't refute me on them <laughs> exactly and and I had never been in the corporate space until the last year and a half when I had the have had the blessing and opportunity to host a show for the uh, one of the primary business clubs in Calgary. So I host a show for them called Back to Business Calgary. And the the language that's that's really fascinating is the language is very different however success be it between personal life or professional life is honestly a lot of the same principles right yeah. and at the end of the day people just want to be seen heard and valued that's yeah. just what human beings want yeah. we want to know that our our second air on this planet is we have created some value but that yeah. there's something of value here. Um, let's talk about, so you're in the, the building stages of your speaking career. Yes. What do you forecast that to look like? Like, just give me, <laughs> no, this is okay. We're, we're, yeah. we're, because I believe that when you speak it, you can live it, right? When yeah. we put it out there, then we find a way to make it happen, right? So don't be a secret speaker. Get, tell us where we're going with your speaking career, because I think this is awesome. So what I'm now thinking is that I'm going to put more emphasis on my online products, my online courses, which is a type of speaking as well. I think training yeah. is a very important element of how we learn. I think the Internet is a beautiful, beautiful thing because we can really hone into who our teachers are uh, or who we want our teachers to be um and i also include a lot of storytelling and and it's it's a lot is question based and again bringing my own vulnerability and my own experience to the table so a lot of my speaking is going into my future online courses um and then i will use the experience i gathered there uh, uh, in my real life speaking world and what I envision there I'm not sure yet to be honest right now I just let things come on my path and then I pick them up and just run with it and <laughs> like the other day I had a university the university here in the Netherlands and I, I, I did a uh, an engagement last week and then I'm in a room filled with 20 year old students who are asking similar questions and yet because they're in a totally different stage of life they need something else from me so and that i love that because that kind of forces me to really go back to oh yeah when i was 20 this was what yep. i was doing and then new things come up so right now i'm using the speaking as a catalyst basically for my teaching does that oh, make sense? Really? Oh, it makes absolute <laughs> okay. sense. Yeah. And, I, and I, I believe this speaking, coaching, mentorship space only has room for growth. And the reason being is as more people are working independently, there's going to be a greater need for them to find mentorship. 
I right? agree. I yeah. agree. And yeah. in general, more people are waking up. So all the more better to have more resources available to help them get there and, and guide them with frameworks and tools that allow them. This is the accelerator. Exactly. Like exactly. our learning is at an accelerated rate. Our technology is at an accelerated rate. Like everything is compounding. We're able to drive oh. everything down smaller and smaller and smaller, right? So when you have mentors and access to to thought leaders like yourself it can accelerate a path for somebody who is really serious and 24 yeah and yeah. they they can literally trim an entire decade off their learning curve yeah by... and and i think the added x factor or I don't even know how to call it, is that the younger generations are way more willing to learn. They have way more, not just access, but there's also simple representation. You know, the, the mental health awareness, everything is way more visible yeah. than it was for me and for you, I'm guessing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like hey, I, I, I took was... typing class. There wasn't even a computer on my forefront. I know. Yeah. University, my first. Like my, in my first three months, I had a question in a class to figure out on the internet who the actress was who played Ellie McBeal. This was in my university course. Like, this is how old I am. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Isn't that it? is hilarious. Yeah, I mean, it was dated even by then, but still. No, so, so there's so much happening. And I, I do feel that, like, the new generations are, are way more open and are way more willing to to put in the effort than my generation and other generations are. Um, so yeah, it's 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 huge because I mean, I'm not that old, but still 10, 15 years ago, it was hard to figure out what to do if you want to do anything. We had some yoga, but I mean, I just figured out mid thirties that I was an introvert. I didn't even know there was a thing. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and there are still so many things like that that I'm now just discovering that are all over TikTok and YouTube. And everybody's, I mean, younger generations are encountering them day to day. And yeah. that's amazing. I, I think it's we overwhelming, I think, but amazing. <laughs> I think our, our younger generation is doing a really great job of removing stigmas around things right? So when the stigma is removed around something, you're going to be more open to speaking about it. And when we speak about it, as I said earlier, when we yeah. speak about something, we can bring it into fruition, we can make it happen, we can deal with it. It's when we're when it's not being spoken about oh, when yeah. it's hidden, right? Um, so I mentioned in the opening that being a published author, 80% of human beings that have been polled, uh, in North America have said that they wanted to write a book or they have a book, they have a story or something. They're somewhere in the process. And yet in North America, it's uh, 8% of that group actually have published, even with all of the great tools and the access that we have now. Um, and, I, and when we bring in Europe and we bring in the rest of the, the on a global, it's less than 5%. It's just approximately 5%, just shy of 5% of the adult population has published a book. This is hard. Publishing a book, like, yeah, it's hard. I, I, there's a reason I haven't done it yet. I guess <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work. Walk us through. So share with us the name of your book and where what you learned along this journey, what, um, what inspired it? Hmm. So the book is called Contrast, a novel. Um, I think my entire life inspired the book. And most obviously the trip the trip i made through europe asking that question how is it to be you it's good to know that this was in the year where the syrian refugee crisis was was at the height there were terrorist attacks in europe that usually don't happen meaning that i was traveling a continent that's just so incredibly beautiful i mean nature the architecture the museums everything there's just so much beauty in europe 
but meanwhile there were also um you know men patrolling metro stations with giant guns which as a european i'm not used to um there were people i saw people refugees walking down highways whole families of them while i was just frolicking through fields of sunflowers and all that really created a disconnect in me like I, I just couldn't grasp on a soul level how how can there be so much beauty on the one end and then so much pain and suffering on the other it's just it's such a naive thing but it i just couldn't wrap my head around how unfair that was well this was the foundation and then i found myself on a greek island um, in the very fortunate situation where that I had a little cottage uh, with a pool and the pool overlooked Turkey in one end and it had uh, uh, it was right by the ocean so I had the, the the sunset every evening I had dolphins swimming by and it was the most beautiful thing in the world and I was doing laps every night there because I was staying there for a couple months and it was during one of those laps where the idea for the book just hit me like lightning and i'd never written fiction not more than a short story i'd never planned on writing a book but because it was just so obvious um this idea that it just had to be written so yeah i totally agree it's it's a hard thing to write um for experienced writers, but if, <laughs> if you're not even setting out to write a book, I don't know, it might be harder. I don't. I, I thought it was really hard. So fortunately, because of my consultancy work, I, I did have some nice uh, um, cash coming in, or I had access to cash coming in. So I was able to hire people who helped me edit and edit and edit and edit <laughs> and yeah. help me through the publishing process because it took me forever to write it I, in total from id to publishing it now last february it, it was eight years because it's it's part of my soul you know and looking back at it now i already see like oh i've i've grown much beyond this now <laughs> but still you know you, you're you're sort of ripping your heart open and pouring your soul out on paper and it, it's yeah, I can't even. I I don't have children, so I can't really compare. But it feels like yeah, this is this is birthing a baby. Wow, eight years, <laughs> eight years. That is a long time to stick with something that doesn't yep. have a conclusive paycheck and yep. doesn't nope. have it doesn't have a guaranteed audience. So mm -hmm. that that is, and that's I think that I think that's what stops human beings is the fear around if I do this, will there be what we consider a success quote? And just for those of you who are listening to this, I just did the air quote things. <laughs> uh, and I think part of this is, is redefining su success. And I, uh, that's okay. what I love about this new generation and this new movements and where we're going is that I think we're moving away from the industrial age concept of success which is work 35 years, get your pension and retire, right? That that was what success was, right? Whereas success now, I think, has a real human element to it, right? Do, am I fulfilled? Uh, a person who is, um, you know, uh, a digital nomad, um, and, and making a, a, an income, but maybe they don't have what we consider traditional where they own a home or this or that, that person's still successful, right? And yeah. they're leaving a legacy of words. They're leaving a legacy of, of messaging. Um, do you see, do you foresee like a sequel to the book? Do you foresee, cause I mean, it, there's the world's kind of gone mad as of late, like the last 10 years, this world has, I don't think I've ever recall maybe it's just because we have more media and we're able to see it better globally but it just seems like the world is not coping well since covid like it just feels like the last 10 years have not been good so yeah and there have been more things happening of course than just covid um 
I think I agree, but then again, I wasn't there during any of the the big wars, so <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> Um, yeah. But yeah, for our generation, you know, the people who have been alive for our time span, definitely, it's a very weird time. And yeah, one of the things with my book is is the, the story is about a ghost, a man who figures out like, oh, I'm dead. What? <laughs> Why am I still here? Because he's still in his garden. Um, and he wonders why. And he figures this, this should maybe not still be the place where I should be but where do I go and how do I get there and then the book is really about him learning that he had to really face the trauma the emotions the hurts the beauty as well of his past in order to let go and I do feel that that is exactly what the world needs and what many of us are also going through and it might also be that because we're so so much more aware of our pains and our trauma that to see the world in pain and in trauma maybe impacts us much more than it has before which might actually be a beautiful thing because it, it does allow for a righteous anger if you know what i mean like yeah. there are many protests going on right now of course for the wars and rightfully so like, yeah no this is inhumane we should do something about that and i i do feel that people are waking up to that and yes there's pain there much pain but we need to work through it you know for us as individuals but also for us as a collective to yes. move to a place of healing and maybe this is this time this chaos is all part of that I didn't I, answer your question. I, I, no, <laughs> no, that's I, I totally agree. I yeah, it's just a, a very interesting time. And that's I, and that's why, you know, I, I do believe that we're on a cusp of something really great. So we've had the evolution of all this technology and just even the last year that we're also starting now to see trickle over into our medical technology mm -hmm. and 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 our building technology so we can start creating better spaces a better health everything right um do you think that you're what okay want to do this what has your readers reported back to you that they've taken from the book what has been their experience because there's always there's the experience of the writer there's the experience of the book and then there's the experience of the reader what do the readers take away from this book I guess it depends on the reader and where they are and who they are. What I've heard is that they, um, yeah, some really connect with it. They say, well, it's a beautiful story and it really not forced me, but it, it sort of triggered me to look back at my own life and look back at what am I hanging on to, which was my intent, not while I was writing it, but when I realized that this was the story I was writing. So that's really beautiful um others just say oh well it's really beautiful written but you know other than that <laughs> they were entertained Whatever. they had they had they were entertained and that's i think the, exactly. the big one is which, is which is also fine but yeah. yeah what i'm of course trying to do is is uh find the audience that will get something out of it there are books like the midnight library or in more from our time the alchemist from uh coelho so those are books that have really you read them, especially at a certain point in your life, and you think, oh, my God, this is exactly what I needed right now. And they help you, you know, like little sparks in you yeah. or they give you new insights. And I've gotten that back from readers, definitely. Um, and that's also and that's really what I want to do. And you ask for a sequel. There's not going to be a sequel for this book, but I do already have another novel in the works that will be about a different theme, more about twin flames, generational trauma, karmic, not trauma, like, ooh, 
it's in the works. <laughs> it's in the works, then, obviously. So, <laughs> so and I, I, and you'll have, uh, I'm sure you'll have sneak peeks and opportunities to engage with you on your website, right? So, yeah, will be awesome. I, I do, I do. At the moment, I get there, but you know, it might still be another eight years. So, you know, if you look at my website, go there for my uh, online courses or my photography. <laughs> That's, your photography that's, that's is a bit gorgeous closer. and Thank i noticed you. um so and, and a lot of is do you do a lot in black and white like i i noticed your website yeah. is is the monochromatic so yeah. i was just curious yeah that's your thing eh yeah that's my thing so my entire instagram that's all black and white and i i kind of love it i have actually another instagram account that's more travel photos which is very colorful but here I get to live my best contrasts. Oh, that's uh, amazing. Black and white life. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, I'm yeah, on Instagram. They, Boy, you, you've got a really wonderfully engaged uh, yeah. audience. Yeah, I'm very happy with it because the, the self-portraits on my Instagram, it's pretty new. It's funny because I... I um, it was when I was making my own offer photo because I had a couple photo shoots. Some of the website photos are from that photo shoot and they're great, but they didn't quite work for my offer photo. So I started thinking, oh, maybe I can do my own offer photo. And while I was doing that, I just sort of tumbled into the self-portrait obsession. <laughs> yeah. It's a really artistic and, and a really great way to express myself in a more physical way whereas i'm usually just behind my keyboard and typing <laughs> you know this is really a way to do something with my face and my body and also work in my sensuality which is not something that i'm very used to or even comfortable with so that's it, it, the self portrait it's, it's really fun it allowed me to grow as a person as well it's 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 very cool oh uh, it's it's uh beautiful photography um and you know what that uh, being able to see yourself through somebody else's lens is also great right and even with self like when we do self portraits we're still it's almost like sometimes you know i don't i don't believe it or not for all the video and media and stuff i don't like having my picture done i'd rather take a picture of somebody else i'd rather interview somebody else right um so when i do get pictures done sometimes i'm like wow I always thought I was heavier than that. That looks so good. Or, oh, you know, I, I didn't, you know, realize my hair was that bright. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it is absolutely something. And I think it's something that if you're looking at growing into yourself, right, as we get older, growing into yourself, I think it's something that uh, we should definitely do to explore ourselves a little bit more and, yeah. and document because, you know what? You'll never be as young as you are today. Definitely. Right? Right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got all your socials up here. Can you give us just an, uh, for our audio uh, audience, can you give us a rundown of your website address and where people can find you, follow, and engage with you? Yeah. So my biggest... No, I've got my two biggest uh, places where I hang out and where you can best engage with me. First is my website, which is uh, uh, www.lindakousement, uh, which is C-O-U-S-S-E-M-E-N-T.com. Easiest thing to keep up with whatever I'm doing um, around living a meaningful life is to sign up for my uh, email list over there. And then the other place where I hang out a lot is on Instagram, and that's uh, linda.kousement. Uh, and it's the page with all the black and white photos of me. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, I also have a Facebook and LinkedIn, again, with Linda Kousement. Just search for that and you'll find them. But I'm less present there at the moment so focus on my website and instagram and you'll be good there you go and the website is it almost has um what is that from the uh from the 90s you remember that might as well face it we're addicted to love you know the the that music video that they did where the girls were all in oh, the gold the girls with the guitars yes and they were yeah, all yeah, in yeah. a black dress and the video yeah. was shot in black and white but they all had red lips red lips red yeah lips. 
That's and what I was looking at. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I was okay. looking at your page. And went, I, just, I can hear that song. I can hear that's that soundtrack. Funny. Isn't that funny how you can like that's funny. You can see something and hear something, right? Yeah, definitely. So. I have not thought about that song in forever, <laughs> but I like that you do. <laughs> as soon as I saw your page, uh, page but, oh, I could so hear that song. I could see <laughs> you with a guitar doing that song. <laughs> Oh, another thing to add to the list. You got 40, 50 more years to create, design, and develop. So someday maybe you'll be doing the guitar for us. Um, yeah, I have a guitar. It, I, I, I am <laughs> blessed with plenty of talents. That's not it. That's not it. I can't sing. That's not so it. I won't be singing anytime soon. Mm, um, so, and uh, folks, I promise all of Linda's contact information. And you know what, do go check out um, and sign up for the newsletter because she is going to be having some new course opportunities yes. that take all of her corporate expertise, bringing those discussions, bringing that insight, living the fullest life. Because at the end of the day, success is success, be it personal or professional. And uh, I think it's going to be great that uh, uh, Linda's going to have an opportunity to actually engage with her and learn from her. Um, so go to her website and check that out and do check out her photography. Like it's really a beautifully done. I like your signature almost. I just, I get this very cool kind of eighties vibe, the, the alternative eighties vibe from your site. It's beautiful. Um, I know. I, 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 Hey, I listen to Depeche Mode while I'm getting ready in the morning. I'm, I know. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing or I'm assuming that was, you know, a really, really amazing time for you where you were partying a lot and where you had a lot of fun. So that it feels really good that that's the time that reminds you of. Absolutely. Uh, I was the uh, origin generation of MTV. I remember April Wine coming on as one of the very first music videos I ever saw on MTV. And uh, yeah, as soon as I saw your site, it's like, oh, wow, this has got good vibes to it. So speaking of good vibes, I always like to close the show out on a quote, a quote that because we need to sometimes we have to borrow inspiration and motivation and positivity to keep us moving forward because life isn't easy and it's not fair, right? Who and my, my mother would always say, Kimberly Joe, who said life was fair. And, and and these are realities. Life is is an opportunity to show your grit and your your grace and and everything. So that's why I always ask for a quote. And then why does this why does this resonate with you? So if you could share your quote and then yeah. tell us why this resonates with you. Okay. The quote I chose was uh, one by Albert Camus, one of the existential philosophers from the 60s. Um, and it's the only way to deal with an unfree world is to become so absolutely free that your very existence is an act of rebellion. And I chose this because, yeah, I know. <laughs> I um, I don't know if you have that in, in the US. I don't even know if we still have that. But we used to have in bars and restaurants and things, we, we had those racks with um, cards that you could just take away, like, like postcards. Yes. And yeah, so I found one of those when I was 20-something and, you know, partying and drinking and doing 20-something things. And I found that card that had this quote on it. And I've had it on my fridge ever since. Yeah. And I know that it resonated with me deeply then, even though I didn't understand it because it wasn't where I was. Where I am now, this is what I teach people. This is what my book is about. This is what my life is about. This is what I choose to be and to do. And I don't need to be a rebellion, a, a rebel necessarily, but freedom, a personal freedom within a society that is very locked down or locked in even. That's definitely what I've been working for. And if we talk about resilience, that's the thing I've been fighting. Not actively but within myself so like shedding the layers of the expectations and oh, all the things that are put on us even just 
from how we are raised and how the the way our our DNA works, <laughs> our lizard brains work. You know, I mean, lizard brains. I love that. That's okay. what I always say. My husband has is a lizard brain. I know. Yeah. I mean, we we we're all just a bunch of meat and hormones, basically, and they drive us to do things. And <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. I'm now realizing. Oh wait, that's that's actually not the normal way of doing that. That's not, that's not me. It's different. Yeah. And that's my freedom, my unique freedom. Just like every single person in the world has, has a definition of what their freedom looks like. Yeah. And they deserve that freedom. And I try to help them get there. Well, back in the 80s, we used to joke, you know, be nice to the weirdos, right? And yeah. uh, and be proud if you are one. Wear wear your freak flag loudly. Um, I've never been a paint within the lines kind of gal. Um, I've always uh, back in Kansas. I was told by my brother in law that they refer to me as Crazy Kim. So <laughs> there's a reason I don't live in Kansas. Um, but uh, you know, or the word unique. And it's like I finally got to the point where I'm just going to own this. Yeah. Right? If, 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 if society wants to tell me I'm a certain way, then I'm okay with that because I'm going to own it. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of today's world oh, yeah. is that we all have, we can all find a community and we can be ourselves. We can find opportunity within our uniqueness. Definitely. And, and even if your unique freedom looks like, having a corporate career and 2.2 children <laughs> you know yep. somewhere in the suburb if that's you amazing yeah but what i'm advocating for is that that be a conscious choice from your alignment with your true self not because your parents wanted it or your social group wanted it or because you feel that that is the way you have to live life to be successful and normal and seen as such now, if, if this is what you want to live, then do your thing, you know? And, and if you want to have beautifully pink hair and do whatever else, then do, go and do that. And I, I do feel that society is moving in that direction, uh, but we can use a lot more of it. Absolutely. So resiliency and grace, mm. you know? So be resilient until people uh, uh, can catch up with your uh, uniqueness, your individualism, your rebel, and uh, mm -hmm. always give yourself grace. Know that not everybody knows what's going on inside your head and you're going to be okay. Every year you're good, right? Yeah. So Linda, I uh, thank you very much for this conversation. I, I love you. positive energy. I love watching women. Uh, uh, with grit and moving forward and stick with itness, you know, which you have done through uh, the your book, getting your book published, and uh, being willing to step out in front by becoming that public speaker by sharing your experiences. It's it's not easy to be in front because when you do, you are you can be a bit of a target. Or I you know. can be a goal. You can be a target <laughs> or a goal. So you know what? I see you as definitely a goal, something to offer. And this is amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me here. It was great. And um, yeah, looking forward to it next time. Absolutely. <laughs> Until we all meet again, you know what? Give yourself grace. That's all I can say. It's, it's, it's a big world. There's a lot going on. And you do have resilience with you. So give yourself some grace. Thank you for joining us here today at Kim Talks Resilience. I'm your host, Kim Hayden. And I'd love to invite you to our resilient community at resilientgift.com. That's resilientgift.com. And we'll send you our magazine and tickets for upcoming events and all sorts of cool things we do here. So be sure to keep watching. And you know what? Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share, because we all know that sharing is caring.